come with me on a journey to the Godot engine. I'm going to show you how to install Godot. Let's check it out. So hopefully you know how to install software on your system, but just in case you don't, I thought I'd go over it real quick. We do have a few options. First of all, you can get the Godot game engine at godotengine.org. That's Godot with a T, Godot, Godot, Godot. Uh, but spelt was pronounced Godot, as far as I know. Anyway, we go here and we can go to download, and it should jump to your operating system, but you can download it for Linux, Mac OS, Windows, Linux server, and they'll have options here under Linux for 64-bit and 32-bit. If you're on a modern system, you probably want a 64-bit, um, unless you're running a very old distro or on a very old machine, in which case you want to go with 32. Don't worry that you're downloading it for a 64-bit or a 32, you'll be able to export to both those. There's also a mono version, which we're not going to worry about. That's if you want to be able to write code in C Sharp, because they do support that. We're just going to be using Godot uh, scripting language in the tutorials I do, so all you need is the standard. So you can choose 64-bit there. Of course, you can download it for Mac. Uh, Windows and a Linux server. We'll talk about the difference uh, in the Linux and Linux server options in in just a few minutes. Uh, but go ahead and download that. It's around a 40 or 50 megabyte file. That's it. It's it's one executable. It's so nice. There's nothing to really install. It's just one executable. Uh, you download it and unzip it and run it. That being said, that's downloading it from the site. Another place, if you're a Linux user, you know you have your repositories. So I'm running uh, Debian uh, Unstable here, Debian SID. Uh, so I'm not sure uh, what version is in other distros, uh, but right now Godot 3 is what's in my repositories. You can see here, now these ones that say i386 because I have repositories for 32-bit stuff as well, but uh, we have the Godot 3, Godot 3 Runner, and Godot 3 Server. So what are these three different things? Uh, well, I'll explain as best I can. Godot 3 will be the game engine with the editor and everything in it. So you're going to design your game in it. It's going to run the games uh, and allow you to modify and export all that stuff. So that's, that's the main game engine. That's all you really need. Godot 3 server, what that does is, so it's a headless version. So come over here to server. I'm not really sure what the difference between headless and server here is, um, but the server one here is the headless one. So what does that mean? So let's say I have a game, I design a game, I put it up on GitHub, you want to automate the uh, packaging of it. And we'll go over this in future videos. So basically, uh, you pull down the code, instead of opening up the editor and then saying package for Linux, package for Windows, you can do it from the shell. If you use the regular Godot 3 engine, you can do it, but it will pop up the GUI interface while it's packaging it, and then it will close. The server one is great, so it doesn't open up the GUI, and also if you're running it on a server. So if you're producing a piece of software and you want to do builds of that software, it can build it on a headless server. So that's what the server version is for. It's for not designing the game, but once the game is created, just packaging it without the GUI interface. So you can install that as well. But again, you can do the same thing here. It's just going to pop up the GUI while it's running. So what is the Godot runner? I'm going to explain this as best I can. It's, it's the engine runtime. So it's again, it's not the whole editor. So when you compile, or I shouldn't say compile really, when you package your game for distribution, you have a few options. We'll talk about all of them in a moment. But let's say I'm packaging it uh, for Linux and Windows and Mac OS, okay? You have an option to package it as a single binary, uh, which will have the game engine built in, basically this runtime file, as well as all your assets and code all in one executable. You also have an option to compile an executable with a separate pack file. Think of this, if you're familiar at all with a lot of games, but thinking back to uh, Doom or Quake are good examples. Doom had WAD files, so you had the game executable, but then all your assets, your art, your music, and all that were inside a WAD file. Similar to that, except for your Doe scripts in, is in the pack file. Uh, why would you do this separately? I'm gonna, again, try to display this as best as I can. In fact, I'm gonna talk to you here, rather than have you guys just stare at a screen. So, what I was saying was, it's really nice to have a single binary with everything. So I can say, here's one file, click on it, and it runs. And you can do that uh, for Windows and Linux. I haven't really looked at what, for Mac, I, I've packaged it. It gives a zip file. I didn't look what was in the zip file because I don't have an Apple machine to test it on. Um, so why wouldn't you want to just have it packaged in one executable binary? Uh, there are a few reasons. 
Um, one, if you want people to be able to make modifications to the game or if you want to have mod packs, it's better to have your pack files separate. That's one reason. Um, a second reason is just for size and distribution. So one pack file is not platform dependent. So I can make an executable for Windows, an executable for Linux, and I can make an executable for Linux 32-bit and 64-bit. And I'll have those executables, but they all can share the same pack file. Uh, so I'm not making multiple pack files embedded in fi into one binary file. And so that's another example. But what really came to light for me, because I was originally was making a full binary for this, because I was like, okay, it's it's uh, the the executable I think is like 20 megabytes, uh, and then my pack file was another 30, so we're looking at 50 megabytes. So I'll just make make a few binaries for 32-bit Linux, 64-bit Linux, and Windows. Then I was looking at making a deb file, so a, a pack uh, a deb file for Debian or Debian-based distributions. I might be getting a little technical here, but that's what this video is for. And it was recommended to me not to do it that way. And here's why. So you have Linux, and Linux runs on pretty much anything. It runs, you know, most modern desktop systems are going to be 64-bit. So, but some people might have older 32-bits. Uh, Debian still supports 32-bit operating systems. So and then there's also ARM-based Linux systems. And at least by default, Godot doesn't export to a, a standard Linux ARM distribution. But if you get a Raspberry Pi running Debian, I'm pretty sure there's an ARM version of the engine on in their repositories. So it makes more sense for me to just create a pack file and then have a the Debian file, the deb file, pull down the executable from the repositories. So that's what this is. So we have the Godot game engine, we have the server for compiling headless, packaging headless, but then you have the Godot 3 runner. The runner is basically the same as the executable program you generate when you ex export, except for it just isn't named like your package. So what you would do if you were to create a deb package, you would put your pack file in there, but then create a dependency on this Godot 3 runner. Okay, you with me? This might get a little, this is, <laughs> I'm worrying that I'm being a little confusing. And then you have a script that says, use a Godot 3 runner with my pack file. Then you don't have to worry about different architectures because if Debian supports it, they're gonna have that Godot 3 runner in the repositories and now you just have one pack file and a deb file saying use that and it's good with all architectures that are supported on Debian with Godot. So. That is a reason why you might separate. So there's a few reasons why you might separate. Yeah, having one single binary with everything in it is convenient for distribution uh, in some aspects, but not in others. And that's pretty much it. You, you have one pack file and then the operating systems can share it regardless of their architecture and, and operating system. So that being said, again, this Godot 3 can do what these other ones do. Uh, it's just, it's gonna be bigger than the runner and it's going to have uh, require a GUI when the server one won't. And again, we'll look at that more in the future. So whether you install it from the website or you install it from your package manager, the package manager is not gonna have the mono version in it, so you're gonna be looking at writing stuff with Godot script. Well, next you wanna open it. So once you open it, uh, the first time you open it, it's going to ask if you wanna download uh, some templates. So if you wanna look at some other people's projects and see how they do things, you can click on that. These are projects I've been working on. I'm gonna create a new one. So I'm just gonna click new project I'm just gonna call this tester. I'm gonna create that folder in my project path. Create and edit. Okay, now we're not gonna get into creating an app so much in this one or a program in this one, but I'm gonna say user interface. Just to have something in there, I'm gonna add a child label and I'll type in this is a test. Now I can hit F5. Oh, gotta save that first. Save it, run it and choose that one. So there's my app, gray background, white text, this is a test. And now let's talk about, a little more about packaging and exporting. So I'm gonna go up to project and export. Right now I have no presets for this project. I have not set up any templates, so what we're gonna do is gonna go add, and I can choose one of these. So I'll choose Linux. And it's gonna tell me here that I have a problem, blah, blah, blah. You're gonna to wanna to click this manage export templates. And just click download. Now. 
the Godot game engine. Oh, and then click official and it'll start downloading it and it will install it for you. The Godot game engine is great because it's, like I said, 40 or 50 megabytes, which isn't much at all for the whole interface for designing games and running them. But if you want to package them, like I said, for APK for Android, you want to generate binaries for Windows, for other architectures, for iOS, uh, package it for use in a web page, it's, you're going to need these templates. And it's, it's a little large, not too bad to today's standards. I think it's kind of large, but again, this is making it so you can export to basically all major platforms out there. Uh, it's about 441 megabytes right now. Once it's done downloading that, it will quickly extract that and you'll be good to go. That's it. We're going to go close. And now when I go back up to projects and export, you can see Linux runnable there. I'm going to just choose, and you have options here again. So we have binary, I'm going to do 64 bit. Uh, we can choose to embed the pack file or not, which I've talked about. I'm going to go create here. I'm just going to make a folder. I'm going to call it bin for my binary stuff. And I'm going to call it my app. And I'm going to say export. It's going to confirm that's what I want to call it. Yes. It's going to give it an extension here of x86 64 because we're doing 64 bit, which um, you don't need that extension on a Linux machine. But if I was to now go to my file browser, you can see here that I have a binary which is actually larger than I thought it was going to be, 40 megabytes, which is basically the game engine, and my pack file, which in this case is only 8 kilobytes because there's no code or, or, or there's basically, it's just telling it to display this text. But that's where all your art and music and your scripts go. Uh, so that's exporting like that. Now let's look at this. Let's say we want to export uh, to another one. We can go HTML. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to that same bin folder, but I'm going to call this HTML. And we're going to call this my app. And we will export. It's going to confirm that's what I want to call it and where I want to put it. And now if I go back over here, you can see that I have this. I can put this up on a web server and people can access the game. And you can see it has that same pack file. So again, I've just doubled up my pack file, which again, this is a teeny tiny file, but once I add a lot of music and graphics, that can get large. So it's good if you can have your different applications, your different packages of this share that same pack file. So if I wanted to, instead of putting it in this HTML folder, I can come back here and just say to put it in my bin folder, tester bin, save. And now I can say export, yes there. And it recreated that stuff, but you can see I now have my Linux executable here and my HTML as well as the other files the HTML needs, but they're both gonna share that same pack file. So I'm not doubling up. And of course I can do the same thing. I can say add, you know, Mac OS, Windows. I guess, I don't know what UWP is. It's a Windows symbol, maybe portable Windows. Is that still a thing? Uh, and then Android, uh, we'll go over Android a little bit more. There are a few things you need to, to create a key, a debugging key for testing and then a key for distribution. Um, and then you also want to make sure you change this name to your unique identifier. Otherwise, it's going to say Godot engine in there. Uh, we'll go over Android packaging a little bit more, but just basically it's just a few options in here, but you got to generate a key. But once you have that set up, those how you like them, I can delete that one. Once you have them set up, I can say export all and I can say whether debugging or release, I'll say debugging and it will create all those packages. So I can have a configuration for Linux. If I want, I can do a 64 bit or 32 bit or both. I can do HTML. I can do iOS, which you probably need a key for as well. That's one thing I have a package for um, Mac OS. And then once you have them all set up, you, like, you just click export all and you've generated packages mall. And of course you can do that from the shell so you can do automatic builds. Clear as mud? Okay, I think I made it sound a little more complicated uh, than I need to just because I'm giving you different options. But really all you have to do is once you download Godot and install it, go to export, install the templates and then export stuff. Again, we're gonna get into the uh, APKs for Android because you just gotta generate a key and change some options. But once you do that, it's super simple as well. Um, don't worry too much. If, it, if you don't understand the difference between packaging your pack file into your binary and separate, I recommend doing it 
well, whatever you think is best. It really isn't that big of a difference. Um, if it becomes, once you start doing it, you'll decide which way is best for you. So thanks for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.